We will now shortly review our mathematical background related to algorithm analysis. The topics we are going to discuss are basic high school mathematics information, as you will remember, simply exponents, logarithms, recursive definitions, and function growth. So, from high school you will remember that any value to the power 0 is equal to 1 by definition. You will also remember x to the a times x to the b is equal to x to the a plus b and x to the a over x to the b is equal to x to the a minus b. So we can simply show, for example, x to the minus n is equal to 1 over x to the n as follows. x to the minus n is equal to x to the 0 minus n. Well, according to this property, we can write this as x to the 0 over x to the n. Then, according to this property, we can just substitute 1 for the numerator, and in the denominator, we have x to the n. Therefore, we obtain x to the minus n is equal to 1 over x to the n, which is what we wanted to show. Similarly, we have x to the a to the power b equal to x to the a times b. For the logarithm, you will remember that log base a of x times y is equal to log base a of x plus log base a of y. Also, log base a of x over y is equal to log base a of x minus log base a of y. Log base a of x to the n is equal to n times log base a of x. So we simply take the power n out of the logarithm. And also, log base a of b is equal to log b of any base, let's say k, over log a of the same base, k. So it becomes log base k of b over log base k of a. Also, you will remember a to the power log base a of x is equal to x. So log base a of x, if it's equal to y, then that means a to the power y is equal to x, where a and x both have to be positive. So since we are computer engineers, we are mostly uh, interested in powers of 2, so log base 2 of x is equal to 3. Therefore, 2 to the 3 is equal to 8. We know log base a of 1 is equal to 0, because a to the 0 is always 1. In this chapter, we will be uh, denoting log base 2 of any value x as simply log x, which means in mathematics, by default, the base was 10. So when you said log x, it meant log base 10 of x. In computer science, especially in this chapter, we will be using the default base as 2. So when we say log x, we mean log base 2 of x. Similarly, we will show log base 10 of x using lg only. And you know ln. Uh, so ln is the same, it's log base e of x, where e is the natural number. So, let's a little bit discuss about recursive definitions. This, of course, as the uh, name resembles, it relates to uh, the recursive functions and methods. So, the basic idea in a recursive definition is to define some object, process, or property in terms of some simpler objects or simpler processes or properties of simpler objects or processes. In any recursive definition, you should have a recursive rule which defines the object based on simpler objects, typically of the same type, but also a terminating rule so that this recursion ends at some point. This is, as I said, very similar to recursive methods where a recursive method calls itself but there, will, there should always be a termination rule so that you make sure that the method does not repeat itself 
uh, in a recursive manner indefinitely. So some examples of recursive definitions would be the most uh, simple one would be the factorial. So we can define f of n as n factorial as follows. f of 0 by definition is equal to 1. In other words, 0 factorial is 1. This is our actually terminating rule. And f of n, where n is positive, is defined as n times f of n minus 1. So we have defined f of n in terms of f of n minus 1 in a recursive manner. So this corresponds to, in mathematics, n factorial being equal to n times n minus 1 factorial, again for positive values. Fibonacci numbers is another example. By definition, f0 and f1 are defined as 1. These together form the uh, terminating rule. And f of k is defined in a recursive manner by its two predecessors, fk and fk minus 1, the, the sum of them. So the Fibonacci numbers start as 1, 1. Remember, these were by definition f0 and f1. But then f2 is f0 plus f1, so it's 1 plus 1 equals 2. f3 would be 1 plus 2 equal to 3. f4 would be 2 plus 3 equal to 5, and it will follow similarly. Now, about the function growth. As we said, we're interested in the performance of the algorithms when the problem size becomes very large. So we should understand how we should first be able to formulate the complexity of the algorithm and then look at that complexity of that formula, how it behaves when the size of the pro pro uh, problem becomes too large. That's why we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity. So assume that a function's complex, uh, sorry, a method's complexity is related to n. Then as n goes to infinity, uh, the complexity also goes to infinity. That means, for example, if in our problem n is, say, the number of items, as the number of items goes to infinity, it becomes too large then our algorithm is also becoming too complex. That's the idea. Similarly, if the complexity would be n to the a, again, we are going to infinity for positive values of a. If the complexity would be 1 over uh, n over a, then uh, the limit would go to 0. Similar is true for limit of 1 over n, as n goes to infinity, that's 0. We said limit of n goes to infinity, limit of log n also goes to infinity. But as we will discuss later, they both go to infinity, but limit of log n goes to infinity slower. Now, this would be an interesting discussion also in the days we are discussing the growth of the coronavirus. Uh, we would like to see the uh, growth of the virus going to uh, large values in a logarithmic, logarithmic manner. Limit of a to the n, that's also infinity. As you will see now, limit of n, log n, and a to the n, they're all going to infinity. But some of them are going too fast, while some are going too slow. How about two functions added together? Limit of f of x plus g of x, would be limit of f of x plus limit of g of x. If you look at the multiplication, uh, limit of the multiplication, that's equal to multiplication of the limits. Similarly, uh, limit of the uh, fraction is equal to the fraction of the limits. But we can also apply L'Hopital's rule. We can take the derivative of also uh, the numerator and the denominator. So limit of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit of the derivative of f of x divided by the derivative of g of x. So let's look at some examples. Say the f of n function is equal to n and g of n function is equal to n square. So we're looking at limit of n over n square. That would be equal to limit of 1 over n, which was 0. 
if you look at limit of n square over n, that would be equal to the limit of n, which is infinity. Limit of n square over n cube is similar to the first one. That would be limit of 1 over n, which is 0. And limit of n cube over n square would be uh, infinity as in the second case. If we look at limit of n over n plus 1 over 2, just flip the uh, denominator and multiply. So that would be equal to limit of 2n divided by n plus 1. The important term there would be the terms that are related to n. So at the denominator we have 2n. At, uh, at the numerator we have 2n, sorry, and at the denominator we have n plus 1, so 2n over n, that would give us a constant value of 2, as n goes to infinity, of course. Uh, you will remember the derivative of logarithm base a of n is equal to 1 over n times logarithm base a of e, and the derivative of a to the power n is equal to a to the n times ln of a.